Good evening, everyone. This is our second online meeting as part of the Wilson project. My name is Gloria Marini, and I belong to the La Pichanaya theatrical crew. The previous meeting uh, was held a couple of weeks ago, and other two will be ended in the upcoming weeks. These meetings revolve around the character, the figure of August Wilson, who died in 2005, and we are going in depth into his works, his topics and issues, especially regarding the African-American identity. And also we're exploring why his works are still so um, present in these, in these days. Before starting our talk today, I would like to thank the US Consulate General of Milan, which is supporting the Wilson Project and our partners, the August Wilson Legacy LLC, the, the University of Padua, especially the Linguistic and Literature Studies Department, the University of Pittsburgh for European Studies. This is an adventure that will lead eventually to the debut on an Italian theatrical stage and in Italian of an August Wilson play, which is Jitney, which will be staged for the first time ever the next uh, May 12th in Vicenza. Probably, parallel to the uh, staging process, from here up to May, uh, many meetings, other two meetings will be held apart from other uh, movie projections and um, workshops, apart from these meetings. This is, this marks, today marks the second meeting and we are analyzing August Wilson and his plays. And today we will be talking about the language employed in his plays. So the African American vernacular English. Today with us, we have three important guests that have backed up the Wilson project ever since the beginning, ever since this project was still a dream and I'm talking about the people, thanks to whom we managed to create the first Italian version of Jitney, and which allowed the Pichinaya to start the staging of this play. Together with us, we have a guest from the last uh, meeting, the moderator and a guide for tonight. So I will leave you to this webinar and uh, I will be back at the end of today's webinar. Good evening, welcome back. As Gloria said a bit ago to this second meeting on the Wilson Project before really getting to the core of today's topics, I would like to lead you to a really precious moment and to really taste the project. Sorry for the technical problems. Now, one of our guests will, will join me. I don't want to say too much beforehand of who she is and how important she has been for, for, for this project, especially in terms of the translation of August Wilson's plays and for the adaptation for the Italian public. So I would like to introduce, to take the stage and to give us a little preview.
the rupture of standard English allowed and allows rebellion and resistance, transforming the oppressor language, creating a culture of resistance. And African-American people created an intimate language that was able to tell way more than it was allowed within the border of the standard English. These are the words of the writer Bell Hooks teaching to transgress. And I thought it was a proper way to start off this, this, this meeting today. Thank you. We have just heard the words of Bell Hooks through uh, Professor Fiona Diel, Professor of English Language and Translation at the Padua University. And she's teaching in bachelor and master's degrees. Professor Diel has been the director of the Linguistic Center of the university and it's coordinated on other projects within the same university, organizing events such as Shakespearean festivals of Padua of 2014, 2016 as well, and other initiatives. I thank you for being here and for opening this, this, this meeting. And thank you for, for your words. So you mentioned this language that once it could break through the standard from the English standard, it could create innovations and new structures, new narratives that could generate interesting developments. In this case, we are talking about the African-American vernacular English used by August Wilson, but the strength of language, which is a, a topic that will be uh, a common ground for today's meeting happens in many countries, for, for, for example, uh, in the contest where I am today, which is Italy, I think it's crucial. Just to give one bit, teeny tiny example, even though it is at the core of all modern and contemporary literature, some Dante Alighieri, who used to write in a very specific language um, from Florence, Volgare Fiorentino, was a bit on the same line, I would say. So on that note, I'd like to introduce the other guests. Professor Lina Insana, teaching Italian at the University of Pittsburgh and scholar of uh, modern Italy culture, going from post-unification of Italy to fascism and resistance up to the very um, up to the very recent years, such as second generation Italians, first generation Italians and descendants or Italo ex people around the world that, that contributed to create these open spaces to talk about these issues and talking about. So welcome Professor Insana and our third guest Last but not least is Angela Solda, um, a from last year, 2022 student at the Linguistic Studies and Literature Department of the University of Padua on a thesis covering the translation into Italian of August Wilson's Jitney. So these are the reasons why these three guests, in my opinion, are the best ones to talk about today's topic and hopefully we will see them at the first projection at, at the first staging of jeepney uh on may 12th so thank you for being here thank you for uh sharing with us your insights and perspectives on, on why august wilson is so important today so as we started off with 
uh, Fiona Diao. Let's now probably start uh, with Professor Lina Insana analyzing what, what's the situation of the Italian diaspora, for, for example, a topic that we don't really hear about that often. So how culture is influenced by that in all contexts. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Fiona and Angela and Renzo for involving not only myself, but only my students in this process to bring uh, August Wilson's play on an Italian stage. My role here today would be to give a context for the project and especially the figure of August Wilson. So I will probably spend a few words about him, his play, and our city, not only August Wilson city, but also mine now, which is Pittsburgh. And about, I will talk to you about how this play allows us to understand this community, this community of African-Americans in a district, which is called the Hill District, which still exists, but which is not the same as it used to be. It still exists, but it exists especially in Wilson's play. So the American public and shortly also the Italian public will understand that context via uh, Wilson's eyes. Uh, Wilson's was born in Pittsburgh in 1945 in the Hill District, Pittsburgh, which is a very central, I would say, district of the city. Uh, the father was of German origin, whereas the mother was African-American. Uh, the father very soon left the family and August Wilson really suffered for it. And he lived a very lonely life. And especially one episode marked uh, his life when he was 14, when a professor, a professor accused him of, have, of copying other people's text. So he dropped out of school. And for the rest of his education, he studies in libraries of the city. He spent hours and hours studying and writing, also poetry, and the first attempts of playwrights. In the 60s, he, regarding the revolution, he takes part to the riots in, in Pittsburgh as it happened in many urban centers at the time and in many other um, urban, urban centers around the world. Over that years, he collaborates with friends and colleagues to create a theatrical crew. And that marks really the beginning of his, of his job in this field. Um, 10, 12 years later, he left Pittsburgh looking for other opportunities and he moved to uh, Seattle, Washington. And in 1978, he wrote Jitney, the first play of what will be a cycle of 10 plays. It one show per 
decade of the 20th century to represent the life and the community of, of his district. In the 70s, that district is the district that is suffering. And the city of Pittsburgh already had decided to change a bit and often drastically. So Wilson took this path in the theatrical world and he talks about the African uh, American communities with all the broken dreams, joys, also challenges. And so the city of Pittsburgh and especially this district become a character in Wilson's plays. One last thing on, on, on the word jitney. And I hope we will have the chance to talk more into detail about what, what it is. Jitney is a kind of taxi. It's an illegal, let's say, uh, transportation medium, which belongs to this to the environment of this community. And especially, it not only represents the community, its mechanisms, the way this community works and functions, but also it represents how neglected this, this community is because the city does not give this community what it needs. And, and, there, and then from this situation, from this denigration, the, the Wilson's play is born. And then you see all the family and friends relations between people and all the people in the in the play so i will now defer to angela i believe yes as you introduce most of wilson's life i'd like to add that before i actually studied at a university i have i have to be honest i had never heard of him and when professor Diel read me the title of, of, of that text, I, I nodded, but inside my head, as I, I wondered, what does it mean? So I looked it up immediately in the dictionary and, and it was not clear at first sight or immediately because the, the, the name of this taxi transportation, Jitney, comes from the tariff that it originally had, which is a quarter. Uh, that was called a jitney by the African Americans. So this title encompasses an entire story only in this one word title. And in, in translation, for example, I decided not to translate it. I provided um, annotations and some comments, obviously for the public at theater will immediately understand it, but in the written translation, I decided to leave it that way, so not to translate it, because I want it to be as it was as originally. And another thing that I'd like to say is that at the, at the beginning of the 20th century, most of African-Americans lived in the South of, of the US, whereas later on, they started migrating towards the northern part of the US and approximately at mid-century, the percentages between the two areas, they were, it was pretty balanced. So this situation, which also is part, influences 
the 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 history behind the play um it is it is uh, a problem as as it is well known back then african american people could not take the the bus as white people did and so jitneys became an essential service african americans needed to to take to use to get around so he became an essential service for the community and this is what wilson does he talks about the city he talks about his the, the people in this community's life and how everybody's lives was was changing in the 60s we had black power riots black panther and the situation starts to change but these changes are talk are are talked about over the 20th century unfortunately he died way too young but his his cycle takes place one for each decade of the 20th century so each play represents a decade and jitney for example takes place in the 70s even though uh he wrote them not in chronological order so jitney was really the first one even though he didn't he did he did, didn't get so much luck because he presented this play to a to a contest but was not accepted whereas for other plays he actually won the pulitzer prize and you, we can imagine how hard it must be for african american writers and he also landed in in broadway so there is a an unusual story behind jitney but in my opinion this story has such a nature I, I believe it's also language-wise. I believe it's it seems easier, but the great thing you can you can do is that you don't have the perception of watching characters. What what you perceive is to hanging out with with people, actual people. You are you are taking there you see the fight between a father and a son and and that's a string that echoes in any one of us there is another contrast between between a very young couple on on very actual issues and themes and that's and that's his, his great power in my in my opinion i'm not african american i i studied i i did but that's not my background and i really got involved and when i i, I got to know more of william of uh, wilson i got really um entangled because you're really uh taken in that setting i i don't know if we want to start now already talking about the language i don't know if lena or fiona uh has anything to say before leaving the floor to professor dl listening to you again some some flashbacks from the last meetings uh opened in my mind we talked about for example enzo and constance romero wilson the late wife of wilson 
and together with Chris Ross and Dr- and we first talked about the geography and uh, pictures were shown uh, like in the in the very early days of his life and moving on uh, in, in in his life and how some ideas started to appearing in his life. And then we talked about this le- this ten plays, which all we all we got, all we have from from him. I remember the words, Cousin's words, when 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 she said that he was super happy to be almost almost over to to, to be almost over the 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 twentieth century, and and she added, okay, so now you need to. To write, you still on 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 this on this last decade. So, and I believe that it is interesting to talk about about Jitney. So this this transportation medium and these professions that do not attain to the legal world. Let's say today. It's March 21st, and it's the World Day for the Eradication of Racial Discrimination. So everything that has been said really uh, matches the ideas that this March 21st bears. So thank you. Thank you for your words, and thank you for your inputs and insights. So... So we're now, I don't know if, if, if Professor Diel wants to add something. Well, thinking of, of what Angela said and her comments on, on the city, Angela said that characters don't seem like characters. It's like we are there listening to to these conversations in Pittsburgh. So these characters speak in their language, but that's not it. Uh, thank you also for, for reminding today's date. It is crucial to recognize this African-American vernacular English as, as an English dialect. But unfortunately, in 1746, a British man used broken speech to define African-American vernacular English in the United States. And it, and this, and, and, and the word broken, broken in broken English stays. And that's a very racist idea of language because under the, ling- the linguistic point of view, that's not inferior to another. And up to the seventies, It was said that uh, he didn't stop people from having original thoughts. There is this idea that African-American children did not have a great performance at school because they were raised with this broken English. Uh, In the 70s, in 72, when William Labov, a linguist, published an article which is still pretty famous, the logic of non-standard English, he claimed that the African-American vernacular English is a language with its rules, with different rules, with aspects that differ from the uh, standard English. For example, there is not the verb to be, like trivial nice, uh, especially the verb to be at, at present tense, 
So this trait doesn't make this language inferior or the, the fact that um, the African-American vernacular English as permits for the double uh, negative, which, for example, there is in Italian. So all of these aspects will be summarized also in the translation aspect and well, still some people think that these are mistakes. But this is another thing. It, it, it happened, the African-American vernacular in English is a language. Can I say something more? This what you said, which is, I believe, crucial, and which I discovered pretty late when I started studying uh, American literature. And I want to thank, really, my professor for that, my professors for that. I, I discovered this aspect very late. And speaking of my thesis to people, I... I meet, I see that this, this trait remains. It's not so obvious. I don't know, Lena, about the US, but here it is still not really known, which is weird because in Italy we have a lot of dialects. So we in Italy should be pretty used to this double code, double language. So being able to learn the standard Italian and dialects. And there are many linguists that support such stand, which I believe I can say for certain right now that these are languages. And for the African-American vernacular English, sometimes it's perceived as a mistaken language or something that you really only learn in the household, my grandmother was born in 1920. She always tried to speak to me in, in standard Italian because she didn't want me to, to grow up speaking a, a dialect version of Italian. And going back to Labo's article that Fiona mentioned, also under the social perspective in 19... 87, if I'm not wrong, it, it became of public domain because in Auckland, some mothers of children studying in the elementary school filed a claim because she wanted them, she wanted their children to be taught uh, African American vernacular English. They didn't want African American vernacular English to be the standard language for them, but they just wanted to know what was also another language. And they didn't want their children to be perceived as not as good as the other children. And we're talking about a wealthy area of Michigan that was not a ghetto. So, and these mothers won this claim. And that was, I believe, the first time that African American vernacular English was actually called language. And that was, in my opinion, a crucial moment. I would when we're talking about language, and that's very important also for uh, Lin and Sana's studies, the language is crucial for our identity. Language, dialects are part of us. But in this case, there is something more to say because we cannot forget that's why at the beginning of this meeting, I, I read that quote from Bell Hooks. 
because we we can't forget what this standard English is. Standard English is the language of slavery, is the language of colonizers. It was the language used to humiliate people. So given the situation, something more is needed to find one's voice. So we're going beyond the family language or the street language. And this language enters lit literature that we can find in August Wilson, Morris, and, and other writers of the century. So the characters need to be talking that language. They couldn't talk in another way. It's, it's their culture, it's their voice. So then, obviously, we, we have a translation problem because how can we translate something like that into another language, in Italian in this case? So that's the, the dilemma that we needed to face for this, trans for this translation, which we'll see, which we will see. Obviously, I, I was not, the first one to to face this this challenge other translators before me uh, dealt with this team and sticking to fiona i always said that it, it could be interesting to know more about how badly African-American English is, is translated. So she found uh, a thesis under Prof Professor Scatti, which probably will be uh, a guest in the third meeting. And this thesis dealt with this theme. Professor Scatti wrote an article on, on a translation, the dating back to a thousand probably of recent years, I can find really the exact year. For example, Done with the Wind still has a language in translation that does not quite feel, feel smooth or natural today. So, so Professor Skaki mentions No, not hurt me. Never hurt me. Sorry, this this is in trans. This is this cannot be translated. A part of the text was was read, but it was not standard Italian. So in this case, Jim was treated as a person that never studied a language, like a person that cannot speak. And that's really not the nicest thing to present a character. And that's a great example of what we're talking about. And Obviously, we didn't want our work to be like that. So if standard in English is the equivalent of standard Italian, how do we translate African-American vernacular English? That's 
that's a problem in, in translation in, in general, as in translating dialects. You can either cut aspects and leave everything in standard language, knowing that you missed something and you lost something. Or there are, you know, some attempts to translate one, for example, one dialect with the language, the dialect from Sicily, but creating not a really equal or comparable situation. Obviously, something will be lost. But as we will see, with the exact with some examples of Angela's translation of Jitney, yet it was a really tough work to do. Also because each character has their own way of talking. And what what could have what what we could do was to preserve and maintain the colloquial aspects of characters. And as Renzo Car Carborera said us, thinking of the pace and rhythm in which people talked and talk in, in the play, because everything can really be found in the way, in the rhythm of words, in the way in which people and cultures talk. So finding a way, and, and, and that is a way of translating a non-standard language. Also, it is not the translation of a written text that needs to be read. The project at the basis was for a text to be staged. So these dialogues will not stay simply on a page, but will be uh, but will be staged by actors. So these words will have a voice, a face, clothes. So the, these need to be smooth, very fluid. They, 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 they can be really fixed. They, they need to sound natural, which is the essence of theater. And Transforming all of that into standard Italian, it would have been a crime, I believe. And that was where the real challenge stood. And the fact that a theater, the fact that people can hear, can see something like that. A theater, I believe it's, it's amazing. Also with Costanza, Wilson's wife. She was incredibly happy of this new horizon that opened up. And I'm very, very happy about it. And now curiosity is on the next level. So what's, what's the solution that you found? And are you going to give us some, some preview tonight? because I really need to know. So what's, what's your solution? I am Ugabara, I'm the president of an African descent association here in Italy. And the goal, our goal was to break the standard narration of African or uh, African descents here in Italy so that we can share our cultural linguistic backgrounds and to share our experiences here in Italy. And we, we often talk about authors from our origin countries. And obviously sometimes we encounter difficulties in expressing those differences because it's true that in Africa, English and French and French are, are spoken. 
I personally, for example, am from Nigeria and still nowadays broken English is often referred to when talking of a country that has not, for example, English as mother tongue, especially in Africa. So, and that was actually a tool that African people used to communicate in a language that was not theirs, so they needed, and also a way that they found to talk among them without being understood by third parties. So obviously this is a very important aspect. The, the aspect of translation, it's, it's debated because how to, to treat, how to take a work in translation? Do you translate into standardized Italian? Not, if not, how so? So there is always a compromise going on. So what's the compromise? What's the situation for Jitney? What, what you say was, what you said was, was really amazing. I'd love to, to work on a Nigerian author's book. And each author has their own features to translate Jitney. I read everything that August Wilson wrote, what other people wrote on Wilson, and you know, things from what other translate translators did. What I opt for was to use in dialogues a very colloquial tone. For example, if I had to translate a thing into English, like, what do you say? I didn't use, what do you say? I cut down parts into Italian, obviously. So I use some variations which is used a lot in spoken language, in the spoken language of Italian. And all other resources that are available in the oral language of Italian. And also I try to follow the rhythms and sounds of the language these items together, I hope, and I truly hope, conveyed and convey the meaning of the text. Franca Cavagnoli, a translator, she doesn't call it original. She calls it origin text because also for me, in my opinion, translation is original. Because obviously something in a translation will be lost, something will be added. So you really bring one culture over to another and it's not simply translating words one by one. Also, I didn't translate the street names, bar names, shop names, everything that depicts Pittsburgh, how, how it was, which is a strong element in, in his writing. So that the, the reader or the spectator, the audience must be, you know, must take a little effort to understand, to go over to get you go beyond what's what's right there to explore this other item. We that's why we don't want to standardize it on our culture, but to leave its feature and bring something from from here. It's it's a very hard to find balance. Also, in this case, this 
the audience knows that that's a translation. Sometimes, you know, it happens with ad adaptations, but this is a story from Pittsburgh, and that's crystal clear, clear right from the beginning. We wanted to leave Pittsburgh intact, untouched. So the person that goes to see this play knows that that's not some random history in Italian. You know that that is a history from Pittsburgh that is conveyed to you by a translation. We're not trying to hide it or to make it seem like, like he, all, he has always been Italian. We're giving visibility to the play, but the play as it was. So you need to know that you're in Pittsburgh. You need, you, you need to know the streets in Pittsburgh. And at the same time, you are there and you're there to learn, to get to know something more. Obviously, it will be probably an effort because you will need to know what, what a jitney is as the word jitney is not translated. So even if, for example, I'm mother tongue English, I didn't know this word. And if I, uh, if I go to see this, this, um, this show, this play in London, they will not be translating that into taxi. It will be jitney, also for English speakers. If I can add something, people will not only learn, but they will enter in contact with what they see. People, the audience will need to work to find a relationship between their self and what's going on on stage. They need to make the effort to understand that this story took place in another place on earth, the US, Pittsburgh, and in another time. So there are a few steps that the audience will have to take in order to really understand this, this history. We, I know it's not, it's not easy to be that kind of audience, but that's necessary. And that's actually um, mandatory for uh, theater. Theater in this case is not, is not only something that happens on the emotional level because I see a very sad story on stage and I feel, and I feel sad. But it's some theater here, it's something that also requires cognitive presence. You need to be there mentally to really understand and to come in contact with the lives of these people. So that, that was the homework. And translation. I know that many times it is said that the politics topic should be avoided, but translation is political because for many, for, for, for much time, many authors were not read in the Western world for political reasons. So this this translation task is really useful for a social change. The fact that we are reading a, a story or a history for, uh, of an Nigerian author allows me to understand what, what other people's lives are, how these people live in their household, and some Sometimes we actually come to the conclusion that they and us, they and we are not so different. 
let's let's read some extracts from this translation. Okay, so Fiona will read in English and Angela will read in Italian. Shirley. Hey, Shirley. I see your boy down the street got a brand new car. Ho visto il tuo amico in fondo alla strada, una macchina nuova di zecca. Who? Who got a new car? Chi? Chi ha una macchina nuova di zecca? Pope, who owned that restaurant down on center. Pope, quello che ha quel ristorante là sulla center. What did he get? Che macchina? He got a brand new shiny Buick Riviera. How much did he hit for, Shilly? Ha una Buick Riviera nuova di zecca. Quanto ha fatto, Shilly? You know me, Dube. I don't be putting nobody's business in the street. First thing you know someone be done got killed talking about. Shilly said, I ain't gonna have that on my conscience. I don't know nothing. Mi conosci, Dub. Non metto mai in piazza gli affari di nessuno. Poi va a finire che qualcuno che diceva Shilly ha detto viene ammazzato. Ma io non lo avrei mica sulla coscienza. Non ne so niente. I know he hit big. He been playing that 261 every day for years. So che ha fatto un bel colpo, punta su quel 261 ogni giorno da anni. I don't know nothing about it, but I do know he's closing up his restaurant. The city's tearing it down. Non ne so niente, ma so che sta chiudendo il ristorante. La città lo butta giù. I didn't know you and Pope was tight. Non sapevo che tu e Pope eravate amici. We ain't tight. I don't know why Dub want to tie me up with him. Non siamo amici. Non so perché Dub vuole che lo siamo. Oh, now, I remember when you all used to be tight. Per favore, mi ricordo quando eravate sempre assieme. Must be when he had that little yellow girl working for him. That's the only time you ever see me down there. Deve essere quando aveva quella ragazza chiara di pelle che lavorava per lui. È l'unica volta che mi hai visto lì. Whatever happened to that girl? Che fine ha fatto quella ragazza? She married one of them boys that drive a bus. That's what I hear. Si è sposata con uno di quei tipi che guidavano l'autobus. Questo è quello che so. She wasn't the one, eh? Non era quella giusta, eh? Ecco. Infatti... <laughs> And we are taken there together with the characters and we are picturing them in our minds. I don't know if you want to comment on this translation or on this extract or, or if I can, you know, start asking questions yeah, let's go. Let's go for the questions. Okay, so first question. Uh, Angela, earlier you said that at first you, fer you, you felt lost while reading this play, starting from the title, and that you needed to read all Wilson's plays before approaching translation what what was the exact moment when you said okay i i understand now i can start translating now there was a weird odd coincidence uh it was to 2021 when biden became president and he read The Hill with, with Climb by Gorman. And the, there was a, a, debate, a debate on newspapers on the translators. And I read all the, else, the articles out there. And it seems to me that the object of the of the um, 
poetry needed to be someone with the same features of the author. So an African-American woman. And I said, oh my God, how can I now be translating Wilson, who is an African-American man, uh, need to approach this, the, this, this, this translation? How can I do it? So, and I, I, I talked to Costanza, and I'm, I'm happy of, of the outcome. And she was very happy of this translation. And when, when it was mid-translation, I, and I'm speaking personally, I got into these words, into these histories, and I started to understand more. And I often read my own words out loud because I needed to hear them apart from reading them. And I have to be honest, at one point I, I said, yeah, this, this work, and I read them over, over and over again. And at, at one moment I was sick and tired of them and I had to, to leave that uh, for, 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 for a while, then you go over it again. Obviously, at that time, I had a deadline because Rhett Renzo uh, was already collaborating in the project. And, and I believe you, you really find yourself got involved. You, you find yourself involved in this, in this process. It was, it was really like that. And I, I, I remember... I, I remember when, when I said, okay, it's working. Oh, yeah. nice. So as this translation process was supported by your professors, Lina and Fiona, I wanted to ask, so this choice of choosing a colloquial oral spoken language, was it a very shared uh, idea? Was it not? Um, is this something that you normally do when there are subjects from other uh, contexts? For example, Italian Americans or also foreign citizens here in Italy. So this choice of losing some nuance, some, some trait. Is it, is it a choice that moves towards um, translation standard or, or, or is it not? Well, in my opinion, it, it, it depends a lot on the source text and its content, the message we want to convey to the reader. In this, in this case, we didn't have any other option, really. Because at the end of the day, the reason what, what Angela said at the beginning of our webinar. One has the perception of, of being in that place. And the reason why we're taking there mentally is, is the language, is the feeling of community that you get. That's why we can talk about in language so the language spoken between a very intimate group inside of our intimate group. So in this case, I see no other choice. The passage from the Italian context to the American context, for example, as, as the case is with uh, authors that move from one country to another, 
the Italian standard is normally more formal and more standardized I would say in my in my opinion than the same in the US also in American literature so we are a bit more used to those language varieties even though all all the rest still remains lit literature with a big L also in the US. Yeah, I believe. I, for example, if for, if for, for example, we read a tourist guide English, it, it, is, it sounds a bit less formal and translating into Italian, normally there is a higher level of formality, which is peculiar of the Italian language. So this, this may happen. So we need to make some adjustments. Another thing that I noticed, which in my opinion is very interesting, the English literature, literature for teens normally the multicultural multilanguage aspects of society are are dealt with and many times we find translanguaging tr translanguages and other phenomena and translating from English with a lot of Spanish words, because for example, takes place in Latin America, one needs to, to translate that, leaving some, some, some aspects, because otherwise the essence is lost. And there is so this, this great mix of of languages and then the the translation is basically the ground of it however going back to august wilson there is not one single solution for all we simply try to fill some gaps and to and not and to not lose too much. Also in cinema, here in Italy, we have a great school of, you know, dubbing because every, mov every movie is dubbed. Now maybe a bit more than in the past. But also dubbing encounters the same kind of problems. Denzel Washington bought the rights for Wilson's plays and, and started producing these movies. The first one was Fences, in which he played, and then was Morani Black, Morani Black Bottom. I watched it in in Italian saying, okay, maybe he can give me some inspiration, but actually the Italian dubbing was in standard Italian. Obviously right there, there are market, um, you know, constraints, but they want the audience to feel at ease that is with, with, with the movie. In Italy, you dub every movie. It means that you really don't want the audience to make any kind of effort. But that also was part of my reasoning for how to, you know, 
translating Wilson. But yeah, in the movies, uh, the language was standard Italian. And that, that I believe is worth some reasoning. I believe the movie industry is probably the medium that most people are more familiar with. And especially those speaking more than language go back and forth from one language to another to really spot the differences. So my other question goes back to what we said up to now and translation. Every time that there are texts involved, to which we want to give a connotation of activism, translation is right, is right there and so is debate on translation. So I wonder now, based on your experience and perspective. Is it important? And if so, how important is it to be close between the translator and the person that is being the object of the translation? So we said before Angela and August Wilson, two very different people. So is this an element, an item that needs to be there when translating or not? For example, according to my experience, when I, when I watch dubbed movies or series where African-Americans are dubbed, halfway through, I go back I just live it or I change language because when because when also when uh, African Americans activists are talking and in English it's black 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 and it Italian it's deco in Italian is di colore or of color I always say okay it's better off in English so that I don't, I don't un undergo this violence that is conveyed via the language. So how this, this proximity between translator and author is important. So because this Wilson tra translation is the proof that by studying and researching, we can, see, we, we, we can achieve a, a solution which is largely accepted. Is this something that I am imagining or, or not? I believe this case of Amanda Gorn is, is the example. I, I thought about it and I said, is, is it true, is it not? Then I read and I studied what I believe. And I read also, you know, some takes from, from journalists. So to talk about a history, to talk about history from World War I, am I supposed to be a soldier uh, from 1915 or... To talk about Anne Frank, am I supposed to be a little girl during war times? Obviously, that led to the paradox. But as you said, the important thing is to study, research, and question oneself, for example. Why am I going for this option? Does it work? And then you need to, you know, look yourself around to see what others did before you. 
this when when that happened i compared what was happening with what wilson said regarding the theater of african americans i want and he said i want african american theaters to have more space and a critic said, what, 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 what does it mean? Why you, you who have your plays in Broadway? And Wilson replied, no, because it, it's not funded. It's not given the same possibilities that, for example, the European theater is given. I don't want to say that. For example, he said that there was there was a, a a show in Broadway, and the main character was an African American actor because it did not match the story that that actor was was portraying. Not because changes cannot be there. And in the, in the translation of Amanda Gorman thing that happened, the important thing is to give the same possibilities, provide the same possibilities with translators, for example, African-Italian ones, as, as we said earlier. So these are the the aspects that I considered important. I don't know if Lina believes otherwise. If I can say something more, the choice of a translator is only the most visible aspect of the editorial process with many aspects, dimensions, and nuances. So what Angela is saying is very true because it's not only the choice of that person, but also all the other positions and roles that are adapting a, a cultural text into another from one precise place and time into another. So we just we, we need to make room for for positions, more positions. African descendants, positions, translators, play um, players, actors, within the same process, and for for it we need to think a lot. We need to ask questions: Who is going to be published? Who is going to be translated? Why? When? And so on. So only if we keep really asking and studying and researching, we can really find that balance. Thank you. Thank you for your time. We are at the closing of today's meeting. So I would like to draw the attention back to Wilson and Jitney. So I will ask you the same question that I asked a couple of weeks ago. You know Wilson's plays. What, what wish are you sending out to the people who will see Wilson for the first time ever on May the 12th and via that play? Just a couple of words. What message or wish you want you want send out? My wish is take some time and go to the theater to see this community of friends and and people that live together, that live the same struggles and problems and joys. That's it. My wish is to listen and enjoy that play. 
watching people that are sharing their their stories and paying careful attention to their words. I hope that people will be will be intrigued and that they want to discover more. Because it's such a pity that August Wilson is not so well known as he as he should. Thank you for our guest tonight. We had tonight Fiona Adiel from Padua University, Professor Lina Insana from the Pittsburgh University, Angela Solda, uh, student from the University of Padua and translator for the Jitney play. I will now defer to Gloria Marini from the Piccionaia. Thank you, Ada. Thank you for moderating this meeting. And I believe it was an amazing, um, an, an, an amazing meeting. I hope everyone enjoyed. And, and I believe that was really uh, the stimulus to go and study more about the, the topic. I want to uh, thank all the guests uh, from tonight. The expectation for this May the 12th is going up and up. And so you're more than welcome to come to Vicenza at the Astra Theater. Thank you, Ara, for moderating this, this meeting. I hope I will have you for the next two meetings because you really add something more to our uh, conversations and meetings. Thank you, uh, the University of Padua and University of Pittsburgh that have become friends in this journey. I want to thank the U.S. Consulate General of Milan. I will invite you, I will, I'm inviting you to follow and check out the agenda for the upcoming events. You will find everything on www.pichanaya.org slash the Wilson Project. And our next webinar will be on April the 4th when we will be dealing with another theme as we will be talking about the language and we will be talking about the race topic. Uh, we started saying something about it tonight. As, you, as we know that in English, the word black is widely used, whereas in Italian is di colore or of color. We will, we will be talking about it with Professor Anna Scacchi. And we will have guests from the US and Italy. And Magna. So we will see you on April the 4th at 6. Have a nice night.